Excellency, Mr. Ambassador, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a, a great honor for the Foundation of Strategic Research uh, uh, to welcome you at Singapore uh, on the behalf of the European Union, uh, represented here by Ambassador Michael Pulch and Mr. Jeremy Hamadi uh, from the European External Action Service. And in association with uh, the Russia Vietnam School of International Studies uh, uh, from the Nyang Technological uh, University of Singapore, and I, I thank grat gratefully uh, Mr. Richard Bitzinger, as well as uh, my friend Pascal Venesson, uh, the French representative in, uh, in this famous uh, uh, institution here in Singapore. Uh, and, uh, and also, I, I would like to, to express my deep gratitude to uh, Mr. Uh, Naganuma Zentaro, uh, uh, Director of Export Control of, uh, uh, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan, for his support, uh, as well as the, the presidency of Ashcock, uh, Japanese presidency of Ashcock uh, during the, this year. Uh, and uh, uh, the support of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in, in, in this, uh, in the organization of this meeting. And um, last, last but, but not least, uh, I, I'd like to, to uh, associate to this uh, thanks uh, the, the Embassy of Singapore at Paris, uh, uh, which pro, uh, produced uh, a substantial uh, support to, uh, to, to the success, uh, to make the this seminar successful. Uh, I don't like to take too, too, too much time uh, for uh, uh, the introduction anyway, because I have to, uh, to, to chair the first round table, so I'll, I, 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 I keep for, my, for me uh, my, my, my substantial comment of the, on the Ashcock, and I uh, led the place to Mr. Richard Bitzinger. Uh, for uh, the welcoming uh, words from uh, the RSIS uh, at Singapore. Many thanks. Well, good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is Richard Bitzinger. I'm the uh, head of the Military Transformations Program out at the uh, Roger Rottenham School of International Studies. And uh, I've been asked uh, by our dean, uh, Barry Desker, to uh, just make a few very brief opening remarks uh, at this and to uh, also express our... Uh, gratitude at being uh, asked to be involved in this. Um, anybody who knows me knows that brevity is not one of my stronger points, but I'll try very hard to, to do this and, uh, and be able to open this up. Um, I, I think the issue that we're dealing with here today, that is the one of uh, efforts to try and uh, control the spread of uh, ballistic missile systems is obviously a, a good and laudatory one. It is what I consider to be one of the big four, so to speak, of WMD, including uh, nuclear, biological, and chemical. And even though I had uh, confessed that personally I probably deal more in the conventional side of weapons systems, uh, one of the things I think is, is important here to me is that ballistic missiles, of course, is one of those kind of things that has a foot in each camp, the, the uh, obviously strategic types of weapon systems, WMD related, but also various other types of, of conventional. And certainly it's, it's one of the things that I think uh, we are increasingly concerned about. And, well, sort of have been for a while, but I think is 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 laudable that uh, there's efforts like the Hague Code of Conduct uh, to be able to try and tackle this as an issue. Um, obviously, uh, initiatives on the part of individuals, organizations, institutions to try and and develop these types of codes of conduct, to try and develop ways in order to uh, impede or retard the, uh, the spread of, of, of the types of systems that can so indiscriminately harm and maim and kill, uh, it's always going to be a laudable, I mean, excuse me, a difficult task. And obviously one that is going to be therefore open to a lot of uh, cynicism and fatalism. And in that regards, I think it's, it's very uh, commendable on the part of institutions 
like like the uh, the Hague Code of Conduct and other efforts to uh, control uh, various types of uh, weapons of mass destruction, etc. And the efforts on the part of uh, the FRS in order to uh, uh, move forward with this that these are these are things that that we should applaud and. Uh, and, and therefore, I think it's uh, at th with that, I'm just going to simply return it back to uh, uh, Mr. Dagozan and, and uh, then obviously to the ambassador. So again, on behalf of RSIS, I thank you all for coming here today. I hope that uh, you'll find not only the uh, conference uh, to be uh, of use, but I also hope that uh, if you have never been a visitor to Singapore, that you find your time here equally enjoyable. So thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, um, it gives me great pleasure to uh, welcome you to the regional seminar in support of the Hague Code of Conduct and Ballistic Missile Non-Proliferation. In particular so, as this was one of the first topics that I had to, had to deal with when I uh, was on my first posting as a diplomat to Washington and the MTCR was about to be established. Um, so non-proliferation never leaves you in a professional life. Um, Today, uh, I, would, I was asked to, uh, to say a few words at the outset also on the EU policy in that regard. And let me start by saying something very uh, simple. Ballistic missile proliferation is a reality. Today, more than 60 countries possess ballistic missile technologies. As we speak, ballistic missiles are held on a standby as operational weapons. Now, the ongoing development, testing, and acquisition of ever more advanced ballistic missiles continue to be a source of concern in different regions of the world, particularly in the Middle East, Northeast Asia, and South Asia, and above all, as regards Iran and DPRK. The acquisition of new technologies such as solid-propelled short-range miss ballistic missiles, for example, gives countries weapons that could be used for accurate and sudden attacks. The EU is strongly committed to the non-proliferation of ballistic missiles, especially those capable of delivering weapons of mass destruction, and that is, of course, a particular concern to all of us. Uh, this, is, this proliferation continues to be um, a serious concern and a threat to international peace and security, as reaffirmed in several UN Security Council resolutions. In the European Union, we um, adopted two uh, strategies that deals with this particular issue, the European security, European security Strategy and the Strategy Against Weapons of Mass Destruction and the Means of Delivery. Um, and it, in these papers, um, we came to the conclusion that we cannot ignore these dangers and have to act proactively. As missile proliferation puts at risk the security of our states, our people, and our interests around the world. Our objective is to prevent, deter, halt, and where possible, eliminate proliferation programs of concerns worldwide. As the EU, we believe that a multilateral response and international norms are the most adequate and effective way to address the issue of ballistic missile proliferation. Unfortunately, there's no legally binding treaty or agreement that can help us curbing and stopping this proliferation. And therefore, the EU strongly supports the Hague, the Hague uh, Code of Conduct. This is one of the very few existing multilateral instruments in the field of ballistic missile proliferation, and the only one with the ambition of reaching universalization. Um, as of August this year, uh, 136 countries have subscribed to the HCOC um, in more than uh, uh, altogether more than two thirds of UN members, that's to say the majority of the international community. And I was told that membership is particularly strong when it comes to European countries. The EU welcomes the continuous efforts made by the rotating chairs of the HCOC in promoting the code and maintaining the dynamic regarding membership. Moreover, last year, uh, 162 UN members voted in favor of the UNGA resolution in support of the Hague Code of Conduct at the uh, United Nations General Assembly. All EU member states have subscribed to the code, and the EU has continued to pursue and support the three key aspects of the code, 
universality, implementation, and enhanced and improved functioning. Last year, the Council of the European Union adopted a decision that provides the means for continued support not only to the HCOC but to missile non-proliferation in general. Through this decision, we have now the means to finance outreach activities and such as this. The implementing agency for this Council decision is the uh, Fondation pour la Recherche Stratégique, and um, uh, we are very, very pleased uh, with the uh, cooperation that we have with the Foundation and the fact that they organised this outreach event today. This regional seminar is specifically designed to raise awareness about the challenges of ballistic missile proliferation, especially in Asia, um, and about the Hague Code of Conduct as a transparency and confidence building measure. We believe that by joining the Hague Code of Conduct, States can demonstrate their commitment to non-proliferation and effective multilateralism and benefit from the transparency measures of the code. But it is also important to encourage states with programs of ballistic missiles to join and recognize that the code is not meant to completely forbid the existence of such weapons, but to encourage restraint and to increase transparency thereby creating more stability and security for all. The core aspect is to promote confidence um, through annual declarations and pre-launch notifications of missile and space launches. So, missile proliferation is changing and transforming every day. It is therefore necessary to adapt our response and to promote the existing instruments. The uh, HCLC gives its members the responsibility to be ambitious in curbing the proliferation of ballistic missiles. I trust that this uh, regional seminar will provide important insights and a perfect opportunity for questions and discussions. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attention and the organizers for all the good work that's gone into organizing this event. Thank you very much indeed.